Hello and welcome to this final exploring session on A Game at Chess by Thomas Middleton. Um, if you're wondering about the uh, where we are, we're uh, up to Act 4, Scene 2, which means you've missed quite a lot of the play if you haven't watched the first two videos. It's so uh, if, if you want to know what's happening and what's going on now, go back and watch the earlier two videos. I mean, really, what do you expect me to do? Recap the whole play? Um, it, it's a game at chess. There's a chess game going on. There are some chess pieces. There's lots of chess pieces. Uh, we are not as extremely doubled today as we were the other day. Um, so hopefully we should be able to pass our way through these uh, final acts uh, with uh, some alacrity and, and decorum, hopefully. Uh, certainly more decorum than we managed yesterday. Um, to guide you through the final act of the play, uh, we have a fantastic team, but it behooves me to mention a few, uh, a few trigger warnings before we begin this, see, uh, this act. In fact, the play generally does feature scenes of uh, uh, suggested sexual violence. Uh, it is also not an ecumenical matter. Uh, this is very partisan against certain types of uh, religious uh, factions, and uh, it is uh, potentially uh, can be viewed as uh, as uh, moderately racist, depending on your view of uh, the loaded terms white and black. Um, and uh, there's lots of, perhaps to be discussed about that in future sessions. I don't know whether we're going to have time to look at that today. Um, we are doing a general overview of this text, trying to find how we uh, engage with it today without as that much context. I'm trying to uh, see how we go into this blind and uh, the blind mice for you today, uh, the various lab rats uh, entering the cage uh, of a game at chess are ah, reading the black and white queen. The queen is... My name is Alexandra. I act professionally and I'm very excited about getting to the end of this play. And uh, reading the white and black king uh, is... Oh, hello, I'm Veronica and based in London. And reading the white duke and the white queen's pawn is... Hi, I'm Pamela. I'm an actor in London. And uh, reading the Black Knight's pawn and the Black Jesting pawn, who hopefully will be slightly less rude than he was last time, is... Hello, I'm Helen Good and I'm a historian. And uh, reading the part of the White Knight is... Hi, I'm Liz Hill and I'm in North Devon. And reading the part of the Black Knight and the White Bishop's pawn is... Hi, I'm William Sutton and I'm in Amsterdam. And reading the part of the Fat Bishop and the Black Duke is... Hi, I'm Alan Scott. I'm in Suffolk and I'm not a professional actor. And I am your host, Robert Crichton, and I will also be reading the Black Bishop's Pawn um, and also occasional stage directions. I got distracted just now because I suddenly saw a typo out of the corner of my eye and then I lost <laughs> it again. Um, so that'll, that'll be... That'll be fun. Um, <laughs> I saw it. I saw it. Um, and uh, ah, yes. Uh, Twelve lines down. <laughs> it is. Yes. Sound uh, uh, treacher is the word. It's uh, it's got uh, mangled there. But sound treacher. Whoever is reading the Black Knight. Oh yes. I um, if that was like treacle. Yeah. So it's treacher. Um, so. Uh, I'm sure there will be a few more typos to come. They've, I've only spotted a, a handful or so that are very overt, um, but uh, this is the nature of the beast when we are all so far away from each other um, and not able to hand out books. So uh, we are opening uh, this session with Act 4, Scene 2, and this uh, is uh, very much opens as a two-hander with the Black Knight and his pawn. Pawn. <coughs> I have spoke to the fat bishop for thee. I'll get the absolution from his own mouth. Reach me my chair of ease, my chair of cousinage. 7,000 pounds in women, reach me that. I love a life to sit upon a bank of heretic gold. Oh, soft and gently, said I. There's a foul floor at the bottom of a drum, pawn. I ne'er shall make sound soldier, but sound teacher with any he in Europe. Oh no, qualm. Thou hast the pukingest soul that e'er I met with. It cannot bear one suckling villainy. 
mind can digest a monster without crudity, a sin as weighty as an elephant, and never womble for it. Aye, you've been used to it, sir. That's a great help. The swallow of my conscience hath but a narrow passage. You must think yet it lies in the penitent pipe and will not down. If I had got seven thousand pounds by offices and gulled down that, the bore would have been bigger. Nay, if thou provest facetious, shall hug thee. Can a soft, rare, poor, poached iniquity so ride upon thy conscience? I'm ashamed of thee. Hast thou betrayed the white house to the black? Beggared a kingdom by dissimulation? Unjointed the fair frame of peace and traffic? Poisoned allegiance? Set faith back? And wrought women's soft souls even up to masculine malice? To pursue truth to death? If the cause roused them? That stares and parrots are first taught to curse thee? I marry, sir, here's swapping sins indeed. All these, and ten times trebled, hath this brain been parent to. They are my offsprings all. A goodly brood. Yet I can jest as lightly, laugh, and tell stirring stories to court madams, daughters of my seducement, with alacrity as high and hearty as youth's time of innocence that never knew a sin to shape a sorrow by. I feel no tempest, not a leaf wind stirring to shake a fault. My conscience is becalmed, rather. I'm sure there's a whirlwind huffs in mine, sir. Sirrah, I've sold the groom of the stall six times and received money of six several ladies ambitious to take place of baronet's wives. To three, old mummy matrons, I have promised the mothership of the maids. <laughs> I have taught our friends, too, to convey White House gold to our black kingdom in cold baked pasties. And so cousin searchers, for venting hallowed oil, beads, medals, pardons, pictures, Veronica's heads in private presses. That's done by one of the habit of a peddler. Letters conveyed in rolls, tobacco balls. When a restraint comes by my politic counsel, some of our Jesuits turn gentlemen ushers, some falconers, some park keepers, and some huntsmen. One took the shape of an old lady's cook once and dispatched two chairs on a Sunday morning, the altar and the dresser. Pray, what use put I my summer recreation to, but more to inform my knowledge in the state and strength of the White Kingdom? No fortification, haven, creek, landing place about the white coast, but I got draft and platform. Learned the depth of all their channels, knowledge of all sands, shelves, rocks, and rivers for invasion properous. A catalogue of all the Navy Royal, the burthen of each ship, the brassy murderers, the number of the men, to what cape bound. Again, for the discovery of the inlands, never a shire, but the state better known to me than to her breast inhabitants. What power of men and horse, gentry's revenues, who well affected to our side, who ill, who neither well nor ill, or the neutrality. 38,000 souls have been seduced, pawn, since the jails vomited with the pill I gave them. Sure. You put oil of toad into that physic, sir. I'm now about a masterpiece of plate and trap the white knight and with false allurements entice him to the black house. More will follow whilst our fat bishop sets upon the queen. Then will our game lie sweetly. And we'll just pause there before the fat bishop comes in. So at the very end there, the black knight, after what we shall say is a possibly a comic set piece in the... <clears throat> Black Knight's uh, singular fashion, um, we get a little bit of exposition of what's coming next. You know, they're going to entrap the White Knight, and then uh, intimations of what seems to be a uh, almost standard practice for these people. Mm. Uh, our fat bishop sets upon the queen. We've been here before, um, and uh, and that's uh, that that goes to the question of tone overall for this play. We would, I we were before we started recording, 
had some interesting questions about, um, you know, where do we pitch this play? Uh, what do we call it in terms of genre? Um, and not too worried about that at this precise second in time. Um, but yeah, this is the Black Knight doing his turn again. We had this last mm. time, didn't we? Um, much more open, though, I thought, than the last time, which I think was full of too many mm. in-jokes that you might have had at the time. This felt very, very gettable. Um, thoughts? Mm. It's the nearest we've had to a straightforward exposition of plot. <laughs> Well I, I, well, I mean, not, not so much in the speech. I mean, the plot um, at the very end there, yes. The, I mean, if you wanted to strip this out just for plot, it's, it's only five lines long. Um, um, otherwise, um, I, I, it, it's sort of about exposition of sin, really, isn't it? And the things mm. he has done. Yeah, I'm proud of it. Mm. Uh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, A brassy murderer. Is a gun, right? Yeah, a cannon. Mm. I would have thought uh, it's not. a mortar. Is it mm. okay? A brass mortar. Yeah. Mm. Sorry. Yeah. Oh no, it's a good point, and I, I like the fact that the, the Black Knight doesn't say he doesn't have a conscience. It's just becalmed. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that and was the, so, yeah, Liz. Uh, no, go. So I was just there, the bright and the poor Black Knight's pawn is just trying to get. He's trying to get. Um, his word in, but he can't. He's got his little sin. He wants to be absolved, and there's no way. He's, there's no. no way he's getting it at the moment. No. No, because the Black Knight's going. Is that all? Mm, yes, exactly. No. Um, you know, sin as weighty as an elephant. I think that's one for a mug, isn't it? Uh, it's got to yeah. go on a t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> and this is the most topical. I mean, it's the most place and time specific speech we've had. Well, it is, but it's also understandable. I think outside, a lot of it is understandable outside of context, I think, as well. It is transposable. Mm. I thought the last time he did a big speech, it felt so specific that I wasn't following bits of it. Mm. Whereas this one, you know, um, the villainies are all, I, th I, I felt understandable, uh, if that made sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, you can disagree yeah. with me. If, if, if no, I think lost. It, could, it could be a standalone piece, couldn't it? Wouldn't. Mm. Yeah. And we have had a few set pieces in this uh, this play so far. Any additional thoughts before we crack on? But was it the Black Knight yesterday who had the thirty-eight thousand nine hundred and eighty-five? Yes. It was right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it, it, it is an so extension of, of that, right? It's an extension of that. It's, it's an extension. It's the same game. There's yeah. there's no difference to this game. Yeah. Um, He's definitely the man who does big numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, With thirty eight thousand being a, an important one. Yeah. Mm. Yes. He. Uh, he. I, I don't know. Was it thirty eight thousand souls, or was it just twenty something thousand acts? Yeah. yeah. Twenty. I think it was twenty thousand plots. Yeah. Twenty thousand nine hundred and eighty five or something. Yeah. It was a very specific <laughs> four score, number. Four score and six, or four score and five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Black Knight has a, has his own mind palace <laughs> filled with um, nasty stuff he's done. All the nasty stuff he's done. Uh, or it's a mind globe. I think he talked about yeah, it being like yes, a globe. Yes, he did. Yes, he mm. did. Um, so you know, we can almost go for a Sherlock reference there. <laughs> also, presumably, uh, he's in pay mm. to somebody, so he they will have to know what he's done in order for him to get the proper recognition and remuneration for it. Well, it's, it's oh, no, some of what he's done, perhaps. Some, yeah. yeah. The, bo the, the bottom line. Mm -hmm. the, the, the ends of what he's achieved, I, yeah. I, suspect, I suspect that there's an awful lot of looking the other way when it comes to the methods. Well, that's mm. the thing, is that who watches the... Uh, who, who spies on the who spies? the Guardian, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Kis, kis Custodiat. Yeah. Mm. Because, um, because a lot of the early modern agents, when they were writing, would put enormous lists of all the things they've done when they were writing to Burley or somebody mm. because they, they really felt they weren't getting the recognition or more importantly, the money mm. that they should. Yes, I'd like to, you know, the expense claim on this must be astronomical. Mm. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so um, we're reintroduced to plot. What is the, what's the Black Knight got uh, cooked up for the Fat Bishop, as it were? Stage direction says, enter Fat Bishop with a book. He's come now, sir. Here's Taxa Potentiaria Knight, the book of general pardons, of all prices. I've been searching for his sin this half hour. and cannot light upon it. That's strange. Let me see it. Wretched that I am. Hath my rage done that there is no precedent of pardon for? For willful murder, thirteen pound four shillings and sixpence. Hmm, it's reasonable cheap. <laughs> for killing Catholics who stood for us and who, for such there were, were indifferent or against us. Killing... Killing, 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 killing. Why, here's nothing but killing, Bishop, on this side. Turn the sheet out and you shall find adultery and other trivial sins. Adultery, oh. Um, oh, yeah, I'm in it now. For adultery, a couple of shillings, and for fornication, fivepence? Yes, these are two good pennywits. I cannot see how a man can, man can mend himself. For lying with mother, sister, or daughter, I marry, sir, thirty-three pounds, three shillings, and b threepence. The sin's gradation, right? Paid all in threes, too. You've read the story of the mo that monster, sir, that got his daughter, sister, and his wife of his own mother. Simony, nine pounds. They may thank me for that. It was nineteen before I came. <laughs> I've mitigated many of the sums. Sodomy sixpence? You should put that sum ever on the back side of your book, Bishop. There's few arms very forward, sir. And what's here, sir? Two old precedents of encouragement. Aye, those are ancient notes. Given as a gratuity for the killing of an heretical prince with a poisoned knife, ducats five thousand. True, sir. That was paid. Promised also to Dr. Lopez for poisoning the maiden queen of the White Kingdom, ducats 20,000, which said sum was afterwards given as meritorious alms to the nunnery at Lisbon, having at this present 10,000 pounds more at use in the townhouse at Antwerp. Why, what's all this to my conscience, worthy holiness? I sue for pardon. I've brought money with me. You must depart. You see, there is no precedent of any price or pardon for your fact. Most miserable. A foul of sins remitted, killing, nay, willful murder. True, there's instance. Were you to kill him, I would pardon you. There's a precedent for that, and a price <laughs> set down. But none for gelding. I've picked out understanding now forever out of that cabalistic bloody riddle. I'll make away all my estate and kill him, and by that act obtain full absolution. And exit the, the poor tortured Black Knight's pawn. <laughs> Enter the Black King. Why, Bishop Knight, where's your removes, your traps? Stand you now idle in the heat of game? My life for yours, Black Sovereign, the game's ours. I've wrought underhand for the White Knight and his brave Duke, and find them coming both. Then for their sanctimonious Queen's surprisal, sir, in that state puzzle and distracted hurry, trust my arch subtlety with. O oh, eagle pride, never was game more hopeful of our side. And the Black Knight is left alone. Oh, if Bishop Bull Beef be not snapped next bout, as the men stand, I'll never trust art more. Wasn't that fun? Oh, um, uh, oh yes, it's wonderful. I, I love the way the black the black king enters and goes. <laughs> <clears throat> Could we get on with the play, please? <laughs> Basically, yeah. That's excellent. Um. Having had no idea what sin we were talking about, the payoff was worth it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I've read the play and I didn't have any idea what it was about. <laughs> I had to ask before we started oh. recording. Yes, he uh, he he uh, chopped somebody's um, thingy off. Um, so 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Basically. Um, for, for, for reasons of which have never been fully explained, actually. <laughs> hmm. Well, they may have been, but they, they went... Um, again, oh. going with the spy oh. thing, this is sort of discussion of the reptile fund, isn't it? It's, it's mm. the, 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 the sums you pay off old agents with, and even mm. if they're not bringing in any actual um, you know, intelligence, you've still got to sometimes pay off old, uh, old uh, sources and things like that. Um, and you know, failed as well as successful operations. Um, I just, I just love the killing, 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 <laughs> killing, <laughs> killing, <laughs> killing. <laughs> and they just turn it, turn it over on the other side. <laughs> then there's trivial things on that side. That's excellent. Oh, it's uh, yeah, that's um. I'm almost disappointed that we're now going to have some plot. Okay. <laughs> uh, any, anything else to add, I think, about that? No, but it's just a classic comedy scene. Yeah, it's so... Brilliant. It's, 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 it really is. Mm. It's, this is the reason why The Black Knight is so my part. Um, <laughs> nobody's having this one. This is nothing. <laughs> um... Okay, the next scene is a dumb show. So if you want to act out anything physically, feel free to do so if it applies to you. Uh, we have a dumb show. Oh, I've got a note in... Uh, in, in a, uh, yes, I have got the note. So, a dumb show opening with... But better. So it opens with recorders uh, playing Enter the Black Queen's Pawn. Sneaky black queen's pawn with a taper in her hand. She conducts the white queen's pawn in her night attire mm -hmm, into one chamber and then conveys the black <clears throat> bishop's pawn, nasty boo hiss everyone, in his night attire or his night habit into another chamber, two different chambers. So puts out the light and she follows him. So we had set up yesterday that uh, that uh, they were going to meet the white uh, queen's pawn and the uh, the, uh, the black bishop's pawn. We're going to meet uh, as a sort of man and wife. Uh, but in the end, it's uh, it's the uh, the black queen's pawn who's uh, who's joining him. So mm. that's all. Important to just explain that because just reading the stage direction might not have got that across. Mm. That's it. That's that's uh, that's that's that scene done with. So I, I don't know if anyone wants to make any noises or sound effects of what's going on there, but uh, I assume they're just playing tiddlywinks. I'm sure it's fine. Uh, <laughs> so um, Act Four, Scene <clears throat> Four, and we have finally a, a proper scene with the White Knight and the White Duke. True noble duke, fair virtue's most endeared one, let us present their rank insinuation with truth of cause and courage, meet their plots with confident goodness that shall strike them groveling. Sir, all the gins, traps, and alluring snares the devil hath been at work since 88 on are laid for the great hope of this game only. Why? the more noble will truth's triumph be. When they have wound about our constant courages, the glitteringest serpent that e'er falsehood fashioned, and glorying most in his resplendent poisons, just heaven can find a bolt to bruise his head. Enter the Black Knight. Look, would you see destruction lie a-sunning? In yonder smile sits blood and treachery basking. In that perfidious model of face falsehood, he, hell, is drawn grinning. What a pain it is for truth to feign a little. Oh, fair knight, the rising glory of that house of candor have I so many protestations lost, 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 quite lost. Am I not worthy of your confidence? I that have vowed the faculties of soul, life, spirit, and brain to your sweet game of youth, your noble 
fruitful game? Can you mistrust any foul play in me that have been ever the most misobserver of your virtues and no way tainted with ambition, save only to be thought your first admirer? How often have I changed for your delight the royal presentation of my place into a mimic jester and become for your sake in the expulsion of sad thoughts of a grave state sire, a light son of pastimes, made three score years a tomboy, a mere wanton. I'll tell you what I told a Savoy dame once, new wed, high plump and lusting for an issue. Within the year, I promised her a child, if she could stride over St. Arumbant's breeches, a relic kept at Mechlin. The next morning, one of my followers, old Hose, was conveyed into her chamber where she tried the feat. By that, and a court freeing friend after, grew great. Why, who could be without thee? I will change to any shape to please you. And my aim hath been to win your love in all this game. Thou hast it nobly. And we long to see the black house, pleasure, state, and dignity. Of honour you'll so surfeit and delight, you'll ne'er desire again to see the white. And they exit, and that's uh, the end. It's not actually marked in the script that I've sent out, uh, but that's the end of the scene. Um, so, um, the black knight is, is going to try and turn the white knight and the white duke. Um, it's not been fully explained, but they've mentioned it in passing that they're going to be pretending and he's going to be obviously pretending to like them. Everybody's pretending. Not one person told the truth mm. in that scene. Mm. Um, not even, uh, not even, I think very much even in a side. Um, so it's an interesting little, little plot development. Um, uh, because we've all got to know the white knight and the white duke so well in the course of this play. Mm. Um, you know, the only act they have done some good action because they they went out and investigated what happened with the uh, the, the White Queen's pawn, but we never saw that happen. That mm. happened all off stage. So um, I think there's a question for the production, which is, you know, making sure they're visible and they're clear as characters, even if they're not saying anything, and making that uh, that's an important visual question. Um, thoughts about that little scenette? Everybody keeps on banging on about 88. Mm. Yeah. That's the second mention we've had. Right? No, no, no one will ever forgive the Spanish Armada. No. Uh, <laughs> Not the Spanish Armada. <laughs> <laughs> no one yeah. expected the Spanish Armada. <laughs> <laughs> Again? I mean, we're talking about very nearly 50, 40 years on. Mm. Yeah, right. Yeah, but like English football fans still bang on about 66. <laughs> 66, no. you're right. Yeah. That's yeah. 60 yeah. years on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's interesting, you know, the Black Knight, uh, you know, he, I mean, if they weren't wise to his game, I mean, how convincing was he? I mean, or how convincing does he need to be? That's the question here um, with his speech. If you can fool enough of the people for enough of the time, that's what matters. Yeah, except he's not. I mean, they're, they're, they're setting him up. Um... Well, from well, that doesn't... point... Sorry, uh, uh, no, go Liz? On, Helen. Go on. No, no just, Liz. He doesn't, he doesn't use very valid examples to uh, what he uses, the, the new wet high plump, putting somebody's hose in the bedroom. It's kind of like high jink, boys high jinks. There's nothing... If he's really trying to impress the other house, it's not really anything that they could think, wow, that's amazing. Mm. He's not demonstrating his competence in the way that he has elsewhere. Um, no, exactly. I mean, he, he could have used elements, well, maybe not of his former speech, but it, in, in the same sense, in, in the more impressive, I think. Mm. But or maybe he's just eking out his... Uh, well, um, earlier in the speech, he says that he's not tainted with ambition. Uh, can you mistrust any foul play in me? 
um, and he says uh, uh, he's yes, nowhere to change with yeah. ambition. So mm. um, I get the impression. I got the impression uh, through that speech that he was actually trying to prove to show himself as harmless. Mm. You know, Except they or, know or he's anything not. beneficial to this yeah. this woman in need who who wanted to you know have a baby. Mm -hmm. But then he must. Um, they must surely. They know that that's not true anyway. I mean, he must think he's he's got some. You're talking about his hubris yesterday. I mean, this is a again a prime example to think he could take anyone in with that. But, yeah. Well, it's it's the thing. He the the, the men get offered toys. Um, the women get get uh, attacked. Um, yeah. uh, and that that's a very tell and we're going to see a very uh, uh, telling contrast. Helen, your hand was up. Yes, I, I was going to say if he's too convincing, it defeats the purpose of the scene. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it does. You know, I, I, I just sort of was raising, you know, what what what's going on with the, the Black Knight's approach here. Um, you know, he doesn't seem to have an extremely, uh, you know, he, he, this is only the opening gambit. It's just come out for a drink, mates, really, isn't it, at this stage? Yeah. He's not, it's he's, a bit nudge-nudge thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, so let's see how the evening progresses for this this <laughs> little this uh, stag party grouping sort of thing. Uh, lads on the town. Let's see how it goes. Anyway, going to a completely different place, and uh, this is where the, the trigger warning once again uh, definitely lears its ugly head. So, enter the White Queen for 4-5. Four, my love, my hope, my dearest, oh, he's gone, ensnared, entrapped, surprised amongst the Black Ones. I never felt extremity like this. Thick darkness dwells upon this hour. Integrity, like one of heaven's bright luminaries, now by error's dullest element interposed, suffers a black eclipse. I never was more sick of love than now I am of horror. I shall be taken. The game's lost. I'm set upon. Oh, tis the turncoat bishop, having watched the advantage of his play, comes now to seize on me. Oh, I am hard beset, distressed most miserably. Is vain to stir. Remove which way you can. I take you now. This is the time we've hoped for. Queen, you must down. No rescue, no deliverance. The Black King's blood burns for thy prostitution, and nothing but the spring of thy chaste virtue can foot-claw his inflammation instantly. And here the White Bishop uh, will be entering at some point around here. He dies upon a pleurisy of luxury if he deflower thee not. Oh, straight of misery! And the white bishop is not being given. So, uh, I will be the white bishop. Uh, you actually no, uh, Liz, could you be the white yeah. bishop, please? And is your holiness his divine procurer? The devil's in it. I'm taken by a ring dove. Where stood this bishop that I saw him not? Oh, you were so ambitious, you looked over me. You aimed at no less person than the queen, the glory of the game. If she were won, the way were open to the master check. And the white king is entering around around here. Which look you, he and his lives to give you, lives to give you. Honour and virtue guide him in his station. Oh, my safe sanctuary. Let heaven's blessings be mine no longer than I am thy sure one. The dove's house is not safer in the rock than thou in my firm bosom. I am blasted. Is this that lump of rank ingratitude, swelled with the poison of hypocrisy? Could he be so malicious, hath partaken of the sweet fertile blessings of our kingdom? Bishop, thou's done our White House gracious service, and worthy the fair reverence of thy place. For thee, black holiness, that worked out thy death as the blind mole, the prosperous son of earth, who, in the casting his ambitious hills up, is often taken and destroyed in the midst of his advanced work. T'were well with thee, if, like that verminous labourer, which thou imitast in hills of pride and malice, when death puts thee up, the silent grave might prove thy bag forever. 
no deeper pit than that, for thy vain hope of the white knight and his most firm assistant, two princely pieces, which I know thy thoughts give lost forever now, my strong assurance of their fixed virtues, could you let in seas of populous untruths against that fort, t'would burst the proudest billows. My fear's past, then. Fear? You were never guilty of an injury to goodness, but in that. It stayed not with me, sir. It was too much if it usurped a thought. Place a strong guard there. Confidence is set, sir. Take that prize hence. Go, reverend of men. Put covet <laughs> covetousness into the bag again. The bag had need be sound, <laughs> or it goes to rack. Sin and my weight will make a strong one crack. <laughs> yes, so the, uh, you, you, you need to reinforce that bag uh, against the, uh, the, the weight of the fat bishop there um, for the pieces at the end of the game. Um, it's, there's an interesting question about precisely what's going on here. Um, you know, because the, the way it set, sets out at the beginning, it sounds like the king's been taken uh, when the white queen runs on. Um, but is it that the because the, the White King's effectively been in hiding to set up this trap because they knew something like this was going to be happening? Um, or, or uh, you know, and obviously they've got the White Knight and the White Duke going undercover. Um, but it, 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 this just sort of comes at you so fast. Um, and again, we have a similar reuse of the terms like... Um, you know, uh, taking a piece um, has such an un unpleasant uh, uh, aspect to it here uh, and the way that's used. Um, thoughts and room about this scene? Yeah, I was going Oh, oh Veronica first. No. <laughs> no, I was just confused at first because I thought that it might mean that she was with the White Knight or the White Duke, but um, clearly not. Uh, yeah, similar to that, um, without going into lots of details about the sort of historical background and the, and the real life references, um, my understanding is that the, the people being represented, with the real people being represented, the white queen is actually uh, symbolic of the daughter of a king rather than his wife. So my love, my only, my whatever it is, I too thought it would be the white knight or, or, or another of the mm. white pieces. Um, and that's kind of supported by um, the way in which the interaction happens with the white king, because he sort of reassures her and tells her to be confident that all will be well, rather than, you know, professing any love or expressing any jealousy or any kind of you know, anything that might be considered marital. Mm. Um, Given that her virtue has just been attempted upon. Mm. Ah, ah, well, um, I, I, well, I think, um, yes and no. Uh, So yeah, I, I think the one of the problems with anything that's uh, do, doing satire and, or uh, 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 you know playing around with real people is that or, or often that they're not absolute crossovers, and that sometimes it's too difficult to try and intersect them. Because I think it's supposed to be that the uh, the White Queen is uh, sister to the White uh, Knight um, in real life. Um, I think that's how that's supposed to work. I'm just looking at footnotes here. Um, so I, I don't, I don't think within the world of the play that that is quite what's going on. Um, but Who's I'm not 100 percent certain. And again, I think we should we should go within the the logic of the play. Should sure, I, I I'd find it very odd that the king and queen would not be man and wife uh, within the logic sure. of the play. Mm. Um, and as it's a chess game, there has there can't be king and sister. Mm. 
as to be a king and queen. Well, no, we were talking about the knights yeah. the knight being. Oh, the knights, sorry. So, so yeah. Explaining. Yeah. Um, hmm. um, but yes, yeah, so I, I think you're right. There is a confusion there about who, uh, the, the, you know, my love, my hope. You're right. There is a confusion there. Um, Do we know who the last white piece to be taken was? Well, I say that's the thing is I, 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 I got the impression that it was it was the, that she's under the impression that the, the, the king has been taken. That's how I read it when, uh, you know, and that she's just um, she's just wrong, um, that mm. she's just hemmed in on all sides by 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 evil. But um, I mean, otherwise, she she's I, she's got to be assuming it's either the Duke or the Knight um, because they're the only pieces who have been really taken because it's only been a pawn so far and the fat bishop. Um, you know, it's only been small cat, uh, pieces that have been taken. You've so also got her father and the others her brother. It might be that the duke is her husband. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I, I think, I think, um, I, I, I think we're possibly going down a blind alley uh, for the moment. Um, let's just have a little look, see if I can find something that's helpful. No, nothing immediately helpful. Um, one, one thought, Robert. Um, I think the opening of that scene is the first time we've actually had explicitly a character talking to the audience rather than to any other character on stage. Oh, no, we've had lots of asides. We've had whole yeah, lots of it, speeches. Yeah, it isn't marked as an aside. No, no, we've had um, lots of speeches. We've had lots of speeches to, to the audience. Um, because it's not clear she, who she's addressing other than the audience. Because there's nobody else on stage for the first eight, ten lines. Yeah. Oh, yes. No, I'm sure she's talking to the audience, but we've, we've got plenty of that in the, in, in, in the play. Fat Bishop had some really nice ones. Yeah. Yeah. We've, really we've had nice. lots and lots of talk, speeches to the audience. Um, but I think, I think the thing here is that ultimately the White Queen is, is separated. Uh, she's being attacked by the fat bishop, and then she is saved by the white bishop and the king. Um, you know, that's the driver of the scene, I think. Um, and obviously the fat bishop loses. The fat bishop is taken. Um, by the white bishop. Yes, yes, the White Bishop and the King in support. Um, there's the White Bishop who comes in first. Uh, there's no mention of any other pieces coming in play. Uh, any additional thoughts apart from that, that confusion which we will possibly worry about another time or see be cleared up a little later? Nope. Okay, let's move into Act Five then. Um, so uh, this is a very interesting uh, uh, first opening scene. I'm going to say to the uh, Black Bishop's pawn, who's me, that the lengthy uh, oration in Latin will not be read. Um, shame, shame. I know, aren't I awful? Um, I, I will simply read the stage direction explaining what is occurring there. Um, but um, yes, this is um, this is the the the, uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 question of what's going on with the uh, the Black Knight uh, enters in in his litter, as it were. Um, the the uh, the uh, Black Bishop's pawn is above uh, the stage, uh, so the Black Knight is in a hurry, and uh, I am from above, as it were. Black Knight, who is currently muted. Hold, hold, is the Black Bishop's pawn, the Jesuit, planted above for his concise oration? Ecce trivante me fixum scissorus asse. Art there, my holy boy? Shut up, Bishop Tumbrel has snapped to the bag by this time. He correcti periat sic. All Latin. Sure, the oration hath infected him. 
Away, away, make haste, they're coming. And music plays. Enter uh, the Black House, uh, which includes the Black King, Queen, Duke, and some pawns. <laughs> and they meet with the Black Knight and uh, the White Knight and the White Duke. All the while, the Black Bishop's pawn is entertaining them all with his Latin oration, which you're just going to have to imagine is happening in the background. It's happening underneath this dialogue. So, go dialogue. Sir, in the short congratulatory speech, you may conceive how the whole house affects you. The colleges and sanctimonious seed plots. Tis clear and so acknowledged, royal sir. What honours, pleasures, rarities, delights your noble thought can think. Uh, black Queen. Ah, oh, we got um, Black Queen. Uh, it's muted. Do, uh, it, yes, no. Um, also, I had frozen, so I didn't know where we were. Ah, sorry. Uh, um, apologies. Uh, Black King, could you give the uh, the the what honors again? So your your uh, Black Queen, your your fair eye fix on. What honors, pleasures, rarities, delights your noble thought can think. Your fair eye fix on that's comprehended in the spacious circuit of our Black Kingdom. They're your servants all. How amply you endear us. They are favours that equally enrich the royal giver as the receiver in the free donation. Music. Oh, I apologise. Mm. Music, music occurs. Um, um, yes, an altar is discovered with tapers unlit and diverse images about it. Hark! To enlarge your welcome from all parts is heard sweet sounding airs. Abstruse things open of voluntary freeness. And yon altar, the seat of adoration, seems to adore the virtues you bring with you. There's a taste of the old vessel still. The erroneous relish. And the song occurs, and I'm assuming it's probably sung by me. Um, Wonder, work, some strange delight. This place was never yet without. To welcome the fair White House knight, and to bring our hopes about. May from the altar flames aspire, those tapers set themselves on fire. May senseless things our joys approve, and those brazen statues move. Quickened by some power above. Or what more strange to show our love? Uh, and uh, there are uh, uh, effects that go with this. Yeah. Flames rise from the altar, tapers take fire, and the images move about in a dance. A happy omen waits upon this hour. All move portentously the right hand way. Come, let's set free all the most choice delights that ever dawned days or quickened nights. And that's the end of that short scene. So they they're getting one hell of a show, uh, the White Knight and the White Duke. Um, you know, it's it's no just dinner and a movie. This is a this is a full <laughs> this is a full full on production for their benefit. Um, thoughts about that scene? It's a very odd scene, uh, um, and uh, you know they're trying to uh, seduce them in an interesting way. Thoughts. I just wondered the, um, I didn't quite understand, there's a taste of the old vessel still. Does anybody know exactly what that's referring to? Mm. Um, I wonder whether it, uh, something referring to, to the Catholic, because it talks about the altar. Yeah, mm. I, I, think, I think they're trying to seduce them with Catholicism. Yeah, but um, then was the taste of the old vessel still? Is he saying there's too much Catholicism in, in that to attempt to tempt us i don't know uh where's the, where's the line sorry it, just, it, line. Um, just before the song right um yeah yes uh, there yes yeah, so that's that's because that's i think that's an aside um to the white duke if the white knight's ah, turning across to his mate going okay. this this smacks of uh, the old yeah. the old ways that um, makes more sense yeah, yeah definitely yeah okay yeah, and what happens seems kind of demonic in a way, mm. um, with the fires and the dancing images at the mm. altar. Mm. Mm. Um, 
it's a hell of an effect to try and pull off for a very short sequence, isn't it? Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, but hey, why not? You're reaching the end of the play. You want to, to make right. sure the audience is awake for mm. the finale. Yeah. <laughs> you know, images, bit of, bit of dancing, a uh, bit of fire. Nothing, nothing, nothing like a bit of fire in, in an enclosed uh, theatrical space. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's never gone I'm wrong. Just That's never gone on wrong. The edge of sacrilege. <laughs> there. Mm. Yeah. Bit of bit of fire, bit of dancing, bit of uh, uh, you know special effects, and just dancing on the edge of sacrilege there mm. without ever dropping into it. Mm. Well, I don't mm. know. Bra because they're, they're suggesting all the religious things, but they're not doing any of them. Um, yeah, they're 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 getting they're getting as flying as close to the wind as they can go, really, aren't they? Um, uh, well, I'm thinking more of the writer. What? I, you know, it, yes, it, 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 in what way? Something adventurous, but also the the writer is really well because you could. I mean, he did, did he not? Isn't Middleton one of the ones who found himself sent to prison for his writings at one point? Um, I think, I think and they, blasphemy they all did. was a real prop. Was a yeah, um, and I know that you know. Um, things like things that could be interpreted as treasonous or blasphemous would be seriously punishable. So he's having to, to tread very lightly as well as um, be very adventurous at this point. Well, I, I, it's, 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 uh, it's, there's an, there's an element there of, you know, well, because you're, you're attacking uh, Catholic uh, rel uh, religious right. taste, then, then, then you can get away with more than you would. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't dare, dare, uh, risk um, attacking the established English church uh, without, you know, getting seriously clobbered. Um, but let's be fair, he's going to get clobbered over this play anyway. So, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, I think we do need to crack it on into further into this act, because that's in, in many ways a sort of an aperitif of the action, as it were, just a wetter appetite for what's going to come. So the White Queen's pawn, who's been away for a little while, um, enters, we've only seen her in the dumb show, uh, as well as the Black Bishop's pawn as well. He's going to enter in a moment in his reverend habit. Uh, we'll take that stage direction of his entrance as red. So let's start with the White Queen's pawn. I see it was but a trial of my duty now. Hath a more modest mind, and in that virtue most worthily hath fate provided for me. Ha! <laughs> Tis the bad man in the reverend habit. Dares he be seen again? Traitor to holiness? O oh, marble-fronted impudence! And knows how ill hath used me. I'm ashamed he blushes not. Are you yet stored with any woman's pity? Are you the mistress of so much devotion, kindness, and charity as to bestow an arms of love on your poor sufferer yet for your sake only? Sir, for the reverend respect you ought to give to sanctity, though none to me, in being her servant vowed and wear her livery, if I might counsel, you should never speak the language of unchasteness in that habit. You would not think how ill it doth with you. The world's a stage on which all parts are played. Mm. You'd think it most absurd to see a devil presented there not in a devil's shape, or wanting one to send him out in yours. You'd rail at that for an absurdity. No college e'er committed. For decorum's sake, then, for pity's cause, for sacred virtue's honour, if you'll persist still in your devil's part, present him as you should do, and let one that carries up the goodness of the play come in that habit, and I'll speak with him. Then will the parts be fitted, and the spectators know which is which. They must have cunning judgments to find it else, for such a one as you is able to deceive a mighty audience. Nay. Those you have seduced, if there be any in the assembly, when they see what manner you play your game with me, they cannot love you. Is there so little hope of you to smile, sir? 
Yes, at your fears, at the ignorance of your power, the little use you make of time, you fortune, knowing you have a husband for lust's shelter. You dare not make, you dare not yet make bold with a friend's comfort. This is the plague of weakness. So hot burning. The syllables of sin fly from his lips as if the letter came new cast from hell. But, well, sitting by the dish you loathe so much, which hath been heartily tasted by your betters, I come to marry you to the gentleman <clears throat> that last enjoyed you. I hope that pleases you. Uh, there's no immodest relish in that office. Huh? Strange of all men, he should first light on him to tie that holy knot that sought to undo me. Were you requested to perform that business, sir? I name you a sure token. As for that, sir, now you're most welcome, and my fair hopes of you. You'll never break the sacred knot you tie once with any lewd soliciting hereafter. But all the crafts in getting of it knit, you're all on fire to make your cousining market. I am the marrier and the man. Do you know me? Do you <laughs> know me? Nice iniquity, strict luxury and holy whoredom that would clap on marriage with all hot speed to solder up your game. See what a scourge fate hath provided for thee. You were a maid. Swear still, you're no worse now. I left you as I found you. Have I startled you? I am quit with you now for my discovery. Your outcries and your cunnings. Farewell, brokerage. Nay, stay, and hear me but give thanks a little. If your ear can endure a work so gracious, then you may take your pleasure. I have done that. That power that had preserved me from this devil. <laughs> How? This that may challenge the chief chair in hell and sit above his master. Bring in merit. That sufferedst him through blind lust to be led last night to the action of some common bed. And this is the Black Bishop's Pawn coming in? Queen. Uh, Queen's, Queen's Pawn, rather? Queen's Pawn, yeah. yes. Is, uh, that's not me, is it? No, no, Black Queen's Pawn. No, I'm the White Bishop's Pawn. Oh, I'm sure I've given the Black Queen's Pawn out. Oh, I obviously haven't. Um, okay, apologies for that. Who wants to be the Black Queen's Pawn? I'm not doing anything at cut the present. Okay, in, in, in you go. You had, a, you had a fun time last night. <laughs> <coughs> not over common, neither. Huh. What, what, what voice is that? Of virgins be thou ever honoured. Now you may go. You hear I've given thanks, sir. Uh, what's... Here's a strange game. Did not I lie with you? No. What devil art thou? I will not answer you, sir, after thanksgiving. Why, you made promise to me after the contract. Yes. Mischief mm. confound thee. I speak not to thee, and you were prepared for it, and set your joys more high. Than you could reach, sir. <laughs> this is a bawdy pawn. I'll slit the throat on t. What? Offer violence to your bedfellow, to one that works so kindly, without rape. My bedfellow. Do you plant your scorn against me? Go. Why, when I was a probationer at Brussels, that engine was not known. Then adoration filled up the place and wonder was in fashion. Is turned to the wild seed of contempt so soon? Can five years stamp a board? Pray, look upon me, sir. I've youth enough to take it. Tis no longer since you were chief agent for the transportation of ladies' daughters, if you be remembered. Some of their portions I could name, who pursued them too. They were soon dispossessed of worldly cares that came into your fingers. Shall I hear her? 
holy derision, yes, till thy ears swell with thine own venom, thy profane life's vomit, whose niece was she who poisoned with child twice and gave her out possessed with a foul spirit when twas indeed your bastard. I am taken in mine own toils. And at this point, enter the White Queen and the White Bishop's Pawn. Yes, and tis just you should be. And thou, lewd pawn, the shame of womanhood. Oh, I am lost of all hands. And I cannot feel the weight of my perdition now he's taken. Tath not the burden of a grasshopper. Oh, thou. Whore of order, cockatrice in photo, and um, I exit. Yeah, can you, can someone else take on the Black Queen's white, does the Black Queen's pawn continue? No, no, no she didn't say anything I'm else. I'm okay, then. I'm okay then. You're okay, you, you can now switch parts. I am now the Black King's prawn. Prawn. <laughs> prawn. <laughs> Still in trouble. <laughs> Yon's the white bishop's pawn. I'll play its heart now. How now, black villain? Wouldst thou heap a murder on thy first foul offence? O oh, merciless bloodhound, tis time that thou wert taken. Death! Prevented! For thy sake and that partner in thy shame, I'll never know man farther than by name. And they all exit. Um, so, um... We Gosh. get we get a comeuppance for the Black Bishop's pawn, um, who um, uh, has been tricked um, quite effectively. Um, whether the, is this justice? I'm just going to ask: Is this justice? <laughs> what 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 is this this comeuppance uh, that he's got here? Um, it's going to take Jeremy Kyle to sort this out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it, it, it's it, it's not the sort of expected resolution one one would expect, considering the violence of the Black Bishop's pawn and you know his intent, um, you know throughout this play. You know his first thought is always, uh, you know, response is always violence. Hmm. Mm. But um, she had. It's vengeance again, isn't it? It's the Black Queen's pawn against him. Yeah. But does the Black Queen's pawn, sorry if I've misunderstood this, but does the Black Queen's pawn also get screwed over by this? No. No, no, no she doesn't. No, it's, 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 oh. it's, 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 it's the unfortunate Black Knight's pawn who's... Um, oh no, that I'm fine with. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, there's no sense of actually anything happening to her per se. I mean, what is the precise nature of, um, you know, uh, the Black Bishop's pawn's fall? I mean, what, what's happening to him now? Or, you know? Well, he's well, I been think, I exposed. Think we saw that... Yeah. Yeah. I think he... we saw it in the dumb show, didn't we? Well, we know, mm. yes, we know, we know he had, um, um, you know, uh, happy times the night before. I'm just, it's just the nature of this um, this entrapment. Are there incriminating been, photographs? Um, the, well, he's been tricked, isn't he? And he thought he was he was with the White Queen's pawn. So first of all, he didn't get what he thought he was getting, and the Black hang on, Queen's pawn was has, an, has a there's a story. Yes, there's the yeah. backstory to it. It's her her niece that he got pregnant and then poisoned her just to get rid of her and the child. Mm. But we don't see oh, justice wow. being, being carried out here. He, no, he just exits. Yeah. Mm. It, 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 it's sort of quite unsatisfactory for me uh, uh, um, in, in that mm. sense of, you know. Does... Yeah, it's a, it's a woman's thing. That's it. It doesn't warrant him being punished in any way. That's the impression you get. Mm. But by any higher order, I mean. Mm. Alexandra, I see your hand. Or I don't know. Or, or Pamela, Pamela, uh, then Sorry. Alexandra. I'm going back to the thing again. There's two lines I don't understand in that case. The White Queen, and thou lewd pawn, the shame of womanhood, and the Black 
Oh, I read it wrong. Apologies. Ignore me. Ignore Excellent. Me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alexandra. Um, I just wanted to point out that the, the bishop isn't, uh, the, sorry, the white bishop, the black bishop's pawn isn't getting um, captured. He's getting exposed. Mm. Yeah. So that's, that's the thing nice. that he's that said, asking yeah. about, you know, what, what is, what, what's the thing that he's kind of complaining about. Um, but are there or are there not consequences? Because I think that's the thing I'm unclear of. Mm. Um, people say nasty things to and about the Black Queen's pawn. She has obviously um, served him up, basically, to the other people mm. on the opposite side. But is he... Is this his capture? Or is he going to be captured? Or... You know, mm. other than the fact that he's been exposed as a serial um, uh, thief, many nasty words. Well, it's, it's, it, it, he's, he has attempted rape uh, many, many times uh, now, uh, or, or at least twice. And sometimes succeeded. Well, no, uh, he's attempted it twice in this play upon yeah. the same person, but mm. also in the stuff that, that the Black uh, Queen's Spawn says, mm. this is something he does. Yes. Um, so he's, you know, in the in the it, sort of coming out of the chess game aspect, he has been exposed as a, a serial, um, I don't know, which obviously in real life is horrible. Mm. But in the context of the chess game, I don't understand what that has as a consequence. Yeah, he just exits um, at this stage, and we don't hear anything. Uh, or at the moment, we haven't heard more about this, and that, that's that's what I'm finding very odd about this. It it feels like yes, he's been exposed, but he's been exposed in a very perverse way, um, and and then the poor, um, you know, uh, the the Black Knight's pawn. Um, there's this this little back and forth, and and they, he just gets taken quite randomly um, at the very at the sort of tail end of the scene. Um, um, maybe. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, does he exit? Sorry, have I misread that? Um, no, he doesn't exit. So yes, he's presumably still captured. He's still with them. So maybe he is effectively captured. Um, let's. Uh, yeah. I think we'll answer this question better at the end of the play. But um, I, I think we should flag it up now. Is there's there's something very odd about this scene? Yes, but also we have to note the actions of the Black Queen's pawn. She seems to have gone over to the White House. Not necessarily. She's just I, sacrificed a piece of her own. Hmm. Yeah. She's playing her own game. She's I, got her revenge, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's got revenge. So she's she's served them, uh, him up to the opposition because they'll do something about it. Her side's not going to do a damn. Yeah. That they've they've actively not done it. They've actively prevent, uh, helped him mm. um, in this. So she doesn't trust her own side particularly either. And she did say in an aside earlier, uh, you know, I'm out for my own. I've got my own agenda. Mm. Um, so, um, it's also worth noticing, sorry, really yeah. quickly, um, how when how all the invective in this particular context is directed at the woman who exposed the man who did mm -hmm. the bad things. So, mm -hmm. the only thing that's addressed to him is, Would you heap murder on the other bad things you've done? But nobody kind of chastises him for it. He doesn't, not only does he not get you know his comeuppance, he doesn't, he, not nobody even acknowledges it as a thing mm, mm. yeah mm. and and they immediately arrest the person who attacked a man manhood um but maybe mm. because he is part of the whole like a clerical institution in that time their justice system had to be it had to be dealt with within that institution like there was the difference between uh, well, ecclesiastical justice as opposed yeah. to common law. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think these are all good points. I think we should we should move I towards think. the end and then see if we can tie some of these <laughs> threads together because there's been a few comments that we've we questions that have been raised which I I'm expecting the final scene uh, uh, to to hopefully tidy up and hopefully uh, sort out. Um, they may not. Who knows? So.
Enter the Black House. Uh, many people ex enter it with, the, with, the, with the Black House. Black King, Black Queen, Black Knight, Black Duke, Black, basically all the black pieces. But they also come in with the White Knight and the White Duke from their Catholic stag knight thing that they had <laughs> um so uh it's you know morning after the night uh, the, you know the, the night before uh, so enter white knight and black king and black knight doing the primary dialogue here you have enriched my knowledge royal sir and my content together instead of riot we set you only welcome so fear is a thing that's seldom heard of in this these parts I hear of the more virtue when I miss on it. We do not use to bury in our bellies 200,000 ducats and then boast on them, or exercise the old Roman painful idleness with care of fetching fishes far from home, the golden-headed co racine out of Egypt, the salpa from Ebusus, or the palamus, which some call summer whiting from Chalcedon, salmons from Aquitaine, Helops from Rhodes, cockles from Chios, franked and fatted up with fire and supper, flour and cocked wine. We cram no birds, nor Epicurean like enclose some creeks of the sea, as Sergius Orata did, he that invented the first stews for oysters and other sea fish, who, besides the pleasure of his own throat, got large revenues by the invention whose fat example the nobility followed. Nor do we imitate that arch gormandizer with two and twenty courses at one dinner, and betwixt every course he and his guests washed and used women, then sat down and strengthened lust swimming in their dishes, which no sooner was tasted but was ready to be vented. Most impious epicures. We commend rather of two extremes the parsimony of Pertinax, who had half lettuces set up to serve again. Orata cognimatus el cogminatus est, quod e paisis, qui auratus vocantur, carissimi fuerint. Hie est sergius orata, qui primus baunias pensilis habuit, rimus optimum saporum ostres lucrinis, adjudicavit. Or his successor, Julian, that would make three meals of a lean hair, and often sup with a green fig, and wipe his beard, as we can. The old bewailers of excess in those days complained there was more coin bid for a cook than for a war horse. But now cooks are purchased after the rate of triumphs, and some dishes after the rate of cooks which must needs make some of your White House gourmandizers, especially your wealthy plump plebeians, like the hogs which scavenger sites that could not move for fat, so insensible of either prick or goad, that mice made holes to needle in their buttocks, and they ne'er felt them. There was once a ruler, Cyrene's governor, choked with his own paunch, which death fat Sanctius, king of Castile, fearing, to his infinite mass of belly, rather chose to be killed suddenly by a pernicious herb taken to make him lean, which old Corduba, king of Morocco, counseled his fear too, that he would hazard to be stunk to death as that huge cormorant that was choked before him. Well, you're as sound a spokesman, sir, for parsimony, clean abstinence, and scarce one meal a day as ever spake with tongue. Send you him mildly, sir. Twas but to find discourse. You're raised of anything. I should be half afraid to feed hereafter. Or I beshrew my heart, for I fear fatness, <coughs> fog of fatness, as I fear a dragon. The comeliness I wish for, that's as glorious. Your course mm. is wondrous strict. I should transgress, sure, were I to change my side, as you've much wrought me. How you misprize. This is not meant to you, ward. You that are wound up to the height of feeding by clime and custom are dispensed with all. You may eat kid, cabrito, calf, and tons. Eat and eat every day, twice, if you please. 
Nay, the franked hen, fattened with milk and corn, a riot which the inhabitants of Delos were first inventors of, or the crammed cockle? Well, for the food I'm happily resolved, but for the diet of my disposition, there comes a trouble. You will hardly find food to please that. It must be a strange nature we cannot find a dish for, having policy the master cook of Christendom to dress it. Pray, name your nature's diet. The first mess is hot ambition. And that's but served in puff paste. Alas, the meanest of our cardinals' cooks can dress that dinner. Your ambition, sir, can fetch no further compass than the world. That's certain, sir. We're about that already. And in the large feast of our vast ambition, we count but the white kingdom, whence you come from. The garden for our cook to pick his salads. The food's lean France, larded with Germany, before which comes the grave chaste seigneury of Venice, served in, capon-like, in white broth. From our chief oven, Italy, the baked meats. Savoy the salt, Geneva the chipped manchette. Below the salt, the Netherlands are placed, a common dish at the lower end of the table, for meaner pride to fall to. For our second course, a spit of Portugal served in for plovers, Indians and Moors for blackbirds. All this while Holland stands ready more melted to make sauce on all occasions. When the voider comes, and with such fear cheer, our full hopes we suffice. Zealand says grace for fashion, and then we rise. Is meat enough in conscience for ambition? If there be any want, there is Switzerland, Polonia, and such pickled things will serve to furnish out the table. You say well, sir, but here's the misery. When I've stopped the mouth of one vice, there's another gapes for food. I am as covetous as a barren womb, the grave of what's more ravenous. Where for you, sir? Call you that heinous that's good husbandry? Why, we make money of our faith, our prayers. We make the very deathbed by her comforts. No most dearly pay for all her pious counsels. Leave rich revenues for a few weak orisons, or else they pass unreconciled without them. Did you but view the vaults within our monasteries? You'd swear then, Plutus? whom the fiction calls the Lord of Riches were entombed there. It's possible. You, you, can. cannot, you cannot walk for tons. But how, shall but, I, um, but how shall I bestow the vice I bring, sirs? You quite forget me. I shall be shut out by your strict key of life. Is yours so vile, sir? Some that are pleased to make a wanton aunt call it infirmity of blood, flesh frailty, but certain there's a worse name in your books for it. The trifle of all vices, the mere innocent, the very novice of this house of clay, beanery. If I but hug thee hard, I show the worst on't. Tis all the fruit we have here after supper. Nay, at the ruins of a nunnery once, six thousand infants' heads found in a fish pond. How? Aye, how? How came they thither, think you? Holdrick, Bishop of Augsburg, in his epistle to Nicholas I, can tell you how. Maybe he was at cleansing of the pond. I can but smile to think how it would puzzle all mother maids that ever lived in those parts to know their own child's head. But is this all? Are you ours yet? One more, and I am silenced. But this that comes now will divide us questionless. Tis ten times, ten times worse than the forerunners. Is it so vile there is no name ordained for it? Toads have their titles, and creation gave serpents and adders those names to be known by. This of all others bears the hiddenest venom, the smoothest poison. I'm an arch dissembler, sir. How? Tis my nature's brand. Turn from me, sir. The time is yet to come that e'er I spoke what my heart meant. And call you that a vice? 
Avoid all profanation, I beseech you, the only prime state virtue upon earth, the policy of empires. Oh, take heed, sir, for fear it take displeasure and forsake you. Tis like a jewel of that precious value, whose worth's not known but to the skillful lapidary, the instrument that picks up princes' hearts and locks up ours from them with the same motion. You never came so near our souls as now. Now you're a brother to us. What have we done? Hath been dissemblance ever? There you lie then, and the game's ours. We give thee checkmate by discovery, King, the noblest mate of all. I will pause there. Um, okay. So. Um, lots of things happening in that uh, sequence, some of which is very, very obscure, um, and some of which is not. Um, um, I, 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 I'm thinking in my head here that you know we, we, you, you really need them having, uh, 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 being wired up for um, by by the uh, the FBI before they go in. Um, right to elicit all this, uh, you know, the world is not enough, but here are all the options. Um, we can offer you all of the world. Which parts of the world do you want? We can offer you all the sins. We can have all the fun. You can have things from here, here. We, we can offer you everything, the moon on a string. And um, they just keep them talking. I really love the fact that the, uh, the white knight almost sort of gives the game away and then doesn't it's like you forgot it you forgot a side should be said to the side uh, at one point and then pull it oh. back oh no no i didn't mean oh. to speak then. <laughs> which, which bit was that sorry it, oh yes it's... i know because i thought i was reading the um yeah there, there's um you know i'm an arch dissembler sir and oh, you know, yes, the, yes, it, yeah, it, yeah. it feels yeah. that feels like a slip rather yes. than a deliberate provocation mm, yeah. um mm but then you turn it round. And I, I, I like the idea that the White Duke and the White Knight are not necessarily brilliant at espionage, um, <laughs> and that they're sort of bumbling through this a bit. There's a dangerous thing to say, that's for sure. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, thoughts about this speech? I, there, there's a lot in this that is, is really opaque and needs a lot of work to get across, or just trimming. Um, I, 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 I feel um, there, there's, there's a lot of good in it. I'd like the idea of this scene. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of it. There's a, the, the Black Knight's doing a lot of speechifying. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of it. Oh, it's a hard sell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I think there needs to be some sort of clarification for us as a modern audience. Uh, as to what it is exactly that gives the game away, or, or sorry, makes them lose the game. Mm. You know, with that moment when they, when the white um, team turn the tables on the black team and go, ah, that's it, right, checkmate. Um, it, it does seem to be the Black Knight's final line, doesn't it? What we have done has been a dissemblance ever. We've always mm. been lying. I think that's the big, mm. that's the big thing, because then you're admitting that everything that's come before is a lie. Um, yes, but the White Knight has just said the same, and that he's suffered no consequences. He's called himself a dissembler. Yeah, but he's, that's to try and get out of the, uh, the, the, the black side for them to say it. Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter to them at this stage because they, they don't want to burn them yet. Um, they want to get them on side. They don't want to take them. From the from the uh, black team's perspective, yes, I understand that. I'm I'm just not getting the rule of the game. I don't think there is a rule. <laughs> so how how do we? So what is it that establishes for us as an as a modern audience and some potentially people who don't play chess? Um, you know, we need we need an understanding of what is it that has changed or somehow been revealed. Because the disassembly thing, I get your point, but because we've just heard the other guy say it, then why does it why does it count? Why does it not count when the white guy says it and it does count when the black guy says it? I, I, I think it's because everybody's they're being overheard. Um, I think that's the idea, is that they're surrounded by the white side who are listening in. Um, and they're saying that everything they've said before is a is a lie. Um, you know, the white the white knight and the white duke have only been lying for the last, you know, few hours. With a lot of difficulty. Yeah. yeah well, the not very good actually has a line where he says, this is so hard. Yeah. 
Whereas, you know, whereas this, they have basically just said, we have spies all over the world. We own everything. So, you know, it, 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 it's the fine, it's just simply the final piece. And it's, it, I think it just needs to be done with such a flourish at the end. You know, everything's been assembled. There you lie then. Gotcha. The game's ours. I, I think you're right. I don't think even then um, that there is a precise point here. It's just simply, we've got enough now. Right. Go, yeah. go, go team. Um, uh, and everyone comes in. Um, and we have, um, we haven't had the stage direction, a great shout and a flourish. Uh, as suddenly uh, all of the uh, the uh, their secrets come out, um, as it were, and everybody enters. Um, I think I think the problem for the uh, modern audience is not that the game is lost. I think the more, more uh, is just precisely what the Black Knight is elucidating throughout most of this speech. Uh, the detail in it is 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 much more opaque than some of the other stuff. Is this sort of a um, Bond villain, since you mentioned Bond, is this a sort of, you know, Bond villain's confession of their plan to rule yeah. the world yeah. Yeah. whilst being secretly recorded? Yeah, that, that's how it seems to me, is that in, in the, you know, early modern context, they've surrounded, they've surrounded the, this, this room with white uh, personnel who I think should now, with the flourish, should burst on and just be holding spears and pointing them in people's faces and suddenly they, they've been captured uh, by being caught in, in their, their, by revealing their plans. I think that's the way to do it. Yeah. Um, both then and now, uh, just uh, we can do the, the wiring up microphone thing first. Um, um, any additional thoughts about this before we go? It's, we're pretty much at the end of the play. It's almost all over now, people. Um, shall one we? One tiny thing, just very, very quickly. Oh, go for it. Um, the bit about there being 6,000 heads in a lake. There was a thing in Ireland a few years ago about finding a load of children's bodies in mm -hmm. a septic tank. And a convent um and so for me that was just that like oh god you know mm -hmm. the soul thing because it yeah. still happens the, the laundries the laundries mm. exactly so yeah. you know it was still happening up to the 80s 90s and you know yeah. still relevant yeah. anyway that was my tiny bit of Cheer Cheer that this yeah, is exactly. this isn't satire that this is actually documentary um <laughs> Sure. Um, and that you know, it's always it's always been an open secret um, mm. uh, uh, potentially here. Uh, though I think here the the inf impetus is that the the, the nuns are, um, are are having it away, and that's mm. uh, they they're getting rid of, rather than uh, than uh, a different kind of uh, a system, yes. systematic abuse. Um, other thoughts before we uh, we close the action. Okay, uh, so this might get a little fiddly because suddenly everybody comes on stage. Um, we'll, I'll, I'll give you the stage direction before the, uh, the, the Black King's next line. Um, so um, there's a great shout and a flourish around about here. And uh, the good people say there are express happiness and the bad people express despair. So go from the Black King, I am lost, I'm taken. I'm lost, I'm taken. Ambitious, covetous, luxurious, falsehood. Dissembler includes all. All hopes confounded. Miserable condition. And with a flourish, enter the white king, the white queen, the white bishop, the white queen's pawn, and other white pieces, etc. Oh, let me bless mine arms with this dear treasure, truth's glorious masterpiece. See, queen of sweetness. He's in my bosom safe, and this fair structure of comely honour, his true blessed assistant. And Same. suggestion suggestion here that the, there's an embracing of the white knight and the white duke by the king. May their integrities ever possess that powerful sanctuary. As twas a game, sir, won with much hazard, so with much more triumph we gave him checkmate by discovery, sir. Obscurity is now the fittest favour falsehood can sue for. It well suits perdition. Tis their best course that so have lost their fame to put their heads into the bag for shame. And there, behold, the bag, like hell mouth, opens. And here we have the 
oddest of stage directions. Right. So a giant bag to put all the chess pieces has been wheeled on stage somehow, or the traps open underneath like the, the, the gaping mouth of hell. And the bag opens, and within it you can see all the black pawns that have, uh, uh, pieces that have been taken, uh, including the fat bishop um, and everybody else. To take her due, and the lost sons appear greedily gaping for in increase of fellowship and infamy, the last desire of wretches, advancing their perdition branded foreheads like envy's issue, or a bed of snakes. Tis too apparent the game's <laughs> lost, kings taken. The White House hath given us the bag. Thank em. I need give you a old bag by yourself. Foot this fat bishop hath so laid me, so squelched me and squeezed me. I've no virtues left in me. You shall find all my goodness, if you look for it, in the bottom of the bag. Thou malapert pawn, the bishop must have room. He will have room, and room to lie at pleasure. All the bag, I think, is room too scant for your spaltro paunch. Down, viper of our order, I abhor thee. Now show thy whorish front. Yes, monster holiness. Uh, contention in the contention in the pit is hell divided. You had need have some of majesty and power to keep good rule amongst you. Make room, bishop. And they not, put the uh, the black king into the bag. I'm not so easily moved when once I'm set. I scorn to sit for any king on earth. Here comes the queen. What say you then to her? And the Black Queen goes into the bag as well. The Fat Bishop, of course, is he going to give way to another piece? No, of course he's not. Indeed, a queen may make a bishop stir. <laughs> Room for the mightiest Machiavell politician that ever the devil hatched of a nun's egg. And in goes the Black Knight as well into the bag. He'll pick a hole in the bag and get out shortly. <laughs> I shall be the last man that creeps out. And that's the misery of greatness ever. Room for a sunburnt, tansy-faced beloved and olive-coloured Ganymede. And that's all that's worth the bagging. And in goes the Black Duke. Crowd in all you can. The bishop will still be uppermost man. Morga, queen, king, queen or politician. So, let the bag close now the fittest womb for treachery, pride, and falsehood, whilst we, winner-like, destroying, through heaven's power, what would destroy, welcome our white knight with loud peals of joy. And everybody exits, apart from the white queen's pawn, who does the epilogue. Oh, yeah. My mistress, the white queen, hath sent me forth and bade me bow thus low to all of worth, that are true friends of the White House and cause, which she hopes most of this assembly draws. For any else, by envy's mark denoted, to those night glowworms in the bag devoted, where'er they sit, stand, or in private lurk, they'll be soon known by their depraving work. But she's assured what they'll commit to bane, her white friend's hands will build up fair again. And that's the end of the wow. play. So everybody's in the bag. The uh, the uh, the black bishop's pawn does indeed get some kind of comeuppance with everybody else, and everybody gets sat on by the fat bishop. <laughs> uh, and your problem is, <laughs> um, you know uh, that what an ending. You know, if you're going to end that's a play, <laughs> Mister. Mr. Creosote <laughs> squashes everybody. Um, it's great. I mean, it's interesting. In I, I, I did look earlier uh, on Alexandra's point about um, who the White Queen is in relation to everybody else, and and uh, you're you're right. It does seem to be the daughter of the queen of the king. So she's more the, the White Princess. 
Um, but even there, there doesn't seem to be any particular, I mean, within the logic of the play, apart from that one mention of her love being taken, um, it's, it's not a plot strand that seems to be taken anywhere um, in terms of the logic of the play itself. Um, and that, that's, that's an interesting thing. Um, the whole subplot of the, the, uh, the, 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 the eunuch and his uh, eunuchizer um, doesn't seem to go anywhere no, at no. all and feels very cuttable now. Um, look, you know, looking at looking at this, it, it's it's the one part where I'm going. Well, dramaturgically, it doesn't really. It, I, I'm not looking at this going. That's something from the, perhaps that's part of the satire from the original. But but it, it just doesn't go anywhere, and that's quite disappointing because there's so much potential there. Mm. Um, well, the thing is, if you if you cut that, you do lose a lot of that um, rather nice scene where the black bishop is um, looking at the book of the tariff for pardons well well yes and no uh, i i think i think you can you can take elements out of that and still keep the the, the gag there and we don't have to take it out as a plot strand i just don't mm, think you need no. to meet him necessarily no. or him as that character um i'm also thinking ahead to how do we cut the number of characters down because mm. it's it's a big cast play and it's very difficult to double because of the three scenes where everybody's in it yeah um and so there's part of me that's thinking, you know, producer's hat. How do we reduce the numbers of chess pieces um, and things? So we're at the end of the play. I've, I Ooh. think I've said my piece. Um, thoughts? We're now into extra time. Who wants to dive in? Well, it was amazing. I mean, apart from the beginning, when it was, as Helen said, they were all good words, but they didn't necessarily make any sense. Um, so it was a slightly confusing at the beginning. Once you got your head around all the different names, because that, that did get better as uh, time went on, I thought it was a, it's an amazing, amazing play. Mm. And so much in it of, and some wonderful, wonderful speeches, particularly the uh, Black, Black Knight. Mm. Oh, it's brilliant. If your question Very interesting. does... If your question was, does it stand up without the context? I think the answer has to be, it does. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, um. The, whether it's playable in terms of its intolerance and its anti-Catholic uh, venom, uh, I don't know. Yeah, that, there's that, that sorry, questionable... No, sorry, there's that questionable line. Um, um, the sunburnt, olive-coloured Ganymede, um, and other ones as well. Mm. Um, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we do. We, we we do have that. Uh, I've I've only flagged it up. We haven't actually addressed uh, addressed the 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 the, uh, the colouring of uh, of pieces and uh, mm. and where that places the play as well. I mean. Uh, uh, it could be made more abstract uh, with some cuts, um, but is that always going to be a sort of part of the problem of of, of just simply the chess metaphor um, simile thing? Um, I mean, that's why I've been pushing the spy angle because actually I think you can transpose mm. an awful lot of that explicitly anti-Catholic <laughs> doctrine, a dogma, to um, you know uh, uh, making it a much more political. Um, aspect, which of course it all is. I mean, we've had this discussion before uh, about, um, you know, uh, it, it, you know, is uh, religious belief and politics, you know, uh, which which is more powerful, where they're basically the, both the same thing uh, to some degree uh, at that time. Uh, sorry, I'm talking again. Other people. I... What what one of the ways I tend to judge these things about whether they are assailable now or workable now is what my grandmother would have said now my grandmother would have really approved of practically everything in this play because mm. she didn't think the pope was a christian and consequently because my grandmother would have thought the play was perfect in every way and a complete truth i don't think it is playable mm. on the Helen's grandmother test. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
one one thought I had, Robert, is I I wasn't picking up uh, colour prejudice um, too much. That may just be no. the way I look at things. What came to mind with me was cowboy movies. The good guys with the white hats, the bad guys with the black hats. Yeah. Mm. I mean, there isn't much loaded language, but there is some. Mm. Um, and if you're thinking about it within its original context, they're talking about Spain. They're talking about people who's, who's, uh, who, who may have a, 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 a darker hued skin uh, in mm. general. Um, it, it is there under the surface. The question is, can, can it be removed? Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, should, should the text go into, onto the stage uh, without um, additional exposition, uh, as it were? I don't know if you'd need to remove it, I think, because there's not a huge amount of um, racism in the linguistics of, um, you know, the, the lines of the characters. It's more in this distinction between black and white. And if you set that as some have, having nothing to do with skin color and having everything to do with the metaphorical houses, um, you could probably get away with that. And then the lines that are racist are people being racist and that is mm. you know uh, sort of something to, to be dealt with in the context of the world of the play as opposed to trying to pretend that it isn't there mm. you know you get you get racist lines you get lots of lines about fair skin and about you know calling mm. people various words that mean dark but are actually very racially charged in loads of other plays that don't get sort of extirpated just because um, the world has moved on, mm. and I think it would add actually it would add a layer of grayness to the white team characters because they're the ones espousing these beliefs. Mm. So for us as a modern audience, we'd be going, "Ah, you are not perfect, and I'm not on your side anymore." Mm -hmm. um. I mean, on a structural point about because um, we, we discussed um, sort of that e that opening gambit, which is you know in many ways really nice, um, you know the play within a play aspect of that opening. But you know if we if we are removing or or distancing ourselves from its original um, anti-Catholic stance, sort of most of that has to go. Um, um, I, there's part of me wondering if that, that letter giving the black bishop's pawn his instructions in the beginning of Act 2, I wonder almost if that's, the, uh, that's actually a potential opening gambit. He opens his sealed orders and then we go into his first scene trying to get into the, 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 the world of the White Queen's pawn and that then opens up that first scene by giving it an exposition straight away. Um, because the wider political game is is a MacGuffin that you know is is it's not even a MacGuffin. It's not there. Mm. We 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 have no you know the the you know we 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 it's it's just not there in the plot at all. Um, you you mentioned Robert when we when you did the introduction on the first um, session we had on this about this far back about this having been a very popular play over a fairly brief period of time mm. and then being heavily stamped upon. Oh, yes. Um, and I think you said you were going to return to that at this yes. stage. Uh, yes, I can certainly uh, attempt to. Um, it is a Friday of a long week, so uh, I, I, I'm, I take some of this with a pinch of salt. So, yes, so over about nine days um this was played repeatedly and um potentially i think more than once on a day i mean it was they they put in matinees um and what became very clear was uh, straight away that this play was scandalous that the king was out of town and they knew they had so many days before someone was going to get round to banning it and that's in part why it was so popular and why it ran consecutive because you know, early modern theatres did not do consecutive runs. Mm. Uh, it just wasn't, they, they had a rotating repertoire and they kept things ticking over. To have a play lasting nine days in a row with bonus performances where they could get it, where people are, are getting copies made of the manuscript. We have um, several different versions of earlier drafts, bit that might got cut or bits that were added in. Uh, that's why some of the readings here may be different from editions that other people are looking at home. 
um, that that random comedy scene um, is not necessarily in every version. Uh, the, the 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 porn scene with the, uh, the with the pawns. Um, <laughs> uh so there, there are different man that so people are copying the play uh for private um uh private distribution uh in, in case it doesn't then get printed later on um and i believe that you know the reason why it then gets after it gets banned and you know everyone gets stamped on in the traditional way um that politics moves on slightly very uh soon after and so it gets printed and it becomes then a popular printed success. Um, you know, uh, at the very beginning, we showed, uh, we read the, the sort of text that went with the, the frontispiece uh, and they had an engraving on the front. And, you know, this was an illustrated play text, you know, an engraving at the time was, it wasn't a woodcut, it was an engraving, it was expensive uh, to, to make. So you get this, um, off the popularity of it, it gets a quite a luxurious printing, um, and uh, and uh, has this hinterland. Um, and the thing is, everybody uh, today talks about the play because of its political context at the time. Every single edition opens with, uh, with to some degree, the co collected Middleton doesn't do this. Actually, they are very aware of the problems that we have been discussing this week. Um, is you know they open with and in 1624 and the Spanish match was a political event uh, and so there's a there's a complicating bargaining thing going on between England and and, and Spain and to do with uh, matches and of uh, of of uh, things which frankly I don't actually quite understand myself and I've read it, these things many many times um, and this play feeds upon various known figures. So, you know, the fat bishop is, is, is a known figure. The, you know, the black knight is a known figure. You know, the, these, these, these are satires. Um, and so I think that feeds into a lot of certainly the black knight's material because he's, you know, he's, he's, he's playing on fears and, um, and, and games that are going on there. Um, and the, the white king, you know, is our king, and that's a very dangerous game to be playing. Um, and uh, and that, that, that is what causes problems. Uh, we not only have the play itself, but we also have lots of material of uh, documents about people who saw the play. So we actually have a sense of the audience response um, and also audience response of people reading the script later. So you had problems knowing who you were reading uh, at times, um, I think Veronica lost a whole speech on 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 Wednesday. Um, can we not? <laughs> <laughs> it was stolen from you. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Um, and it, you know, it was, it was a poor it's character. My cues all the time. Yeah, it was awful. Um, but you know, but there's a there's an account of someone writing a letter just going, "I saw, I, I I read this thing. I, I've no idea what was going on, probably because I don't understand chess." And I'm going, no, that's not why. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's 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 a you know from the point of view of a podcast and creating. <clears throat> you know, content around this play. This is a fabulous play because there's so much material around it that we could do interesting episodes about the play. Um, the question is, you know, what do we do with the play and how do we stage it and how do we record it and how do we, you know, trigger warning it, basically. You know, if we do do the text as writ, um, you know, how do we um, say we, we personally don't believe in this um but we're still doing the play anyway and you know the justifications mm -hmm. thereof and the questions that raises um and that's that's as close i think to an exposition as you're going to get at this stage from me <laughs> yeah i know I, I think the point i take up on that is i don't think looking at it as an outsider and you know as not someone who's earned a living from theater um you're putting forward somebody else's work you're not actually necessarily endorsing what's being said yes but we have ma if we make a choice to do this work then we on some level we are um mm -hmm. unless we pointedly make it clear that we're not we, we you know we're doing something something with it um and you know we've we've got five years four or five years now before the anniversary mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. in my mind i 
I would like to work towards a production in 2024, you know, when we're allowed to leave our houses again. Um, <laughs> Optimist. <laughs> and to spend four years building up uh, material online that people, you know, build an audience for this play using recordings like this, using the podcast, doing an audio version, um, building, building a, a sense in the public's eye um, of roots into this play and then uh, doing, doing a production, you know, trying to raise money because this is a production that will cost money. Uh, and it's on a scale that, frankly, I'm, we're nowhere near being able to do. Um, you know, at the moment, I'm thinking plays maximum cast of six. You know, we're thinking ahead. If I can get this down to 12, I'll be really happy. Um, and, you know, that might involve a lot of, a lot of things. So, so all these questions are important. And, you know, well, next... With my, yeah, no, go ahead. With my historian's hat on, I say go for it, warts and all. Mm. Mm. As, as a historical artifact of its time. Mm. Absolutely. It's very rich. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know, but I mean, I'm the... The thing is, it's I can I can think of a number of plays which are perennials, um, which if you took the sort of politically correct attitude, you wouldn't touch with a, a barge pole, and yet they're probably exactly. some of the most played plays of all time, as have been for four centuries. Mm. I mean, in that sense, you know, I've deliberately done this without context. The next time we look at this play, and there will be a next time, will be to actively look at the context and actually start mm. building that case. But mm. as that's how it, every edition seems to start, I wanted to start with, you know, a room of people going, huh? <laughs> well, if, you've got that. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, I still feel a bit like if, if we're doing that and we can read the data, we see the text in front of us, you know, we have to say, right, okay, an audience is going to, you know, reasonable percentage of people will be doing the mm. same, uh, even, even with a visual thing. Um, other thoughts? I mean, you know, we're going to do it different ways, different media many times. So there is that thing of, yes, we could do it warts and all, but we can, we can also play around. And, um, I finally found a way of putting the um, the pick in the chat box. Yes, it's beautiful. Yeah, it is a beautiful image. Uh, I can't see anything. Ah. <laughs> in the I chat. have to download it on my... You, have, you have to download oh, it. Download well, you can't know. view it. Right. But, uh, well, but what, 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 you, have, you have to click it, and then ah. it opens. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Chat. Oh, no, it's just... Yeah, my chat. Chas, as it was acted nine days together at the Globe on the bank side. Loving that <laughs> accent. The black house <laughs> and the white house. Uh, you, you, you missed the treat yesterday of the Scouser. <laughs> oh, yeah. Recorded oh, yeah. for posterity. Yes, I'll watch that later. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, we're going to have to round yes. up. So, uh, just to uh, ask any, any final thoughts from the room. William, uh, any final thoughts from you, sir? <laughs> to be honest, I haven't a clue what's going on in this play. No. I, I, I've been here the whole week long and I've been trying to get my head around it. And though there are some gorgeous characters, um, you know, I, I really like Fat Bishop and the Black Knight. And I really liked um, uh, the, the, the white pawn, the, the poor put upon mm. white queen's pawn, is it? White queen's yeah. pawn, yeah. White mm. queen's pawn, yeah. Those, I mean, those were the three characters that stood out for me. Um, and for the rest, good Lord, <laughs> really, it's was something I'd have to go back again, but you're right. It's one of those things that if the, if the players can get their head around it, then the audience can get their head around it. Mm -hmm. if, if we know what we're doing, then we can give that to the audience. Yeah. Uh, Liz, any final thoughts? Mm. I was wondering, do you think actually, I, whether the white queen's or she knew then that what the black queen's pawn was going to do that's a good question because i wasn't sure myself there um mm. was she in on the game at that point had she it been explained or was she entirely yeah. unaware or whether she finds it out at that moment when yeah. there's the the voice coming from without it, it felt like by that point mm. she'd been clued in but maybe not before mm. it seemed knowing 
Um, you know, is, is her lips moving at the same time as the, 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 the black queen's pawn is speaking? Because it's, it's, it looks like a wonderful uh, game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That would be very funny, wouldn't it? A completely mm. different voice, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's very rich. Lots, lots to, uh, certainly something you'd want to read again. Mm. Uh, Pamela, as you know, someone who's come in completely late in the day, um, you know. Um, um, yeah, I'm glad William said he didn't understand it because I have no <laughs> clue what's going on. So I will have to go and watch your last two days, obviously. Um, yeah, uh, I, I no, sorry, I don't really have anything. That's fine. That's fine. It's 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 a it's a legitimate response. <laughs> um, Alan, any final thoughts? I'm still confused. Excellent. <laughs> Veronica, any final thoughts? Um, I think visually it has the potential to be absolutely stunning. Mm. Um, you've kind of got these incredibly, in my opinion, iconic images. I don't know, um, like strong imagery. You've got like this altar that bursts into flames, mm. um, this bag that can open up to the pits of hell, mm. um, that banquet that they have where it's almost like, hedonistic and lavish. I don't know. Um, mm. it, it's very exciting for me to imagine. Mm. Ah, the, 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 the joys of people trying to increase the budget. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, Alexandra, any final thoughts? Um, I think it would be great to do, to put, to put on. I think it's got a lot of, of contemporary resonances. I think a lot more can be found. Mm. Um, and I also uh, really appreciate, I think there are, some, there are some faults, but there are also some really brilliant things that um, sort of appear in the character's journeys and in the characterization of, of uh, certain individuals that I think with some choice, with some directorial choices, could give us some really, really interesting, you know, enormous journey um, mm. that is always very satisfying to watch. You know, of, like Liz was saying, if the White Queen's Pawn is in on the Black Queen's Pawn's last twist, mm. then for her as a character, that will have been a massive change in, in you know, who she is as a person and how she approaches mm. reality. Um, and we love seeing that in two hours. Mm -hmm. uh, and Helen, final thought? Uh, I think that you've got to find a way of doing the heroic journey of the Prince and the Duke, in this case, the Knight and the Duke, into the, th the, the, the perils of the Black House <laughs> and their <laughs> wonderful resurgent ends, a, a, a bit like Magic Flute. I was just gonna say mm. yes. You know, <laughs> when they, when they, they are, they, they, they do go through fire and water and everything and, mm. and come out. I, I don't know, I was starting to hear Vel before. Velvet Underground on, uh, and, and, you know, they're going, they're going into a den of iniquity there. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway. but I mean, I think, you know, we miss that really in the, in the reading, but I think it's, mm. it's got to be found. And fortunately there, I have to sign off because uh, we're really, really uh, running out of time. So I'd like to thank all the readers for this, this, this uh, first step in a journey over the next four or so years <laughs> as we try and build towards making this a show. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, and goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.